the bottle. Done it before. Linda and Tom, me, were getting worried about Dan. I found uh, this. Interesting. So it's the story so far. Number one, when the captains arrived and Dan was struggling with the writer's block, he found his notebook and wrote all night, but also found time for a few glasses of wine with the wife. Number two, Linda and Tommy had surprised visitors the same weekend that Dan's friend was visiting. Dan changed his plans so Linda's parents could visit, but also arranged with Tommy's friend to come for a toned-down sleepover. Number three, when Linda's grandmother's funeral was the same day as Dan's book signing and the trip they planned with Tommy, Dan skipped the book signing to get go to the funeral with Linda, but also sent a chapter to Paul for brackets, query, quarterly preview. When Linda and Tommy, uh, number four. When Linda and Tommy wanted to go to, for a weekend trip, Dan decided to take Tommy to an amusement park and called, Boost, called Booster Bay, but also promised that they would go camping as soon as things settled down. Number five. When Linda put out an art show and asked Dan's help with publicity, Dan chose to work for long hours before a deadline instead, but found some time to help Linda edit her promo materials. And we're up to chapter 6 now. When Dan's drinking began helping his work, but harming his family life, dot dot dot. Let's uh, find out what happens, huh? Assembly time approximately 3 hours required tools, full of screwdriver, soft faced hammer, half inch wrench, socket recommended, 764th hex key. Weird. Town list. Go to library out of books again. Check community board for babysitters. Swing by wild. New movie playing? Question mark. Drop by Dr. Walker's. Call ahead. Hmm. Trash bags, aspirin, salad dressing, beer, case, popcorn, hogburn, oyburn, bread. Weird. So, is my light gone? Oh, it's still there. Thank the gods. Uh, I want to read that, but... Making stress worse, not better. Oh, gods. I can hear someone, but I don't know where they are. Hang on, there he is. I can see the threads. I think I can pull this book off. Hey, good man. <laughs> Tommy. Is Dad working and drinking too much? Barb, I know I wrote yesterday, but I just... I need your advice. I think Dan's drinking too much. And before you start to worry, let me say he's not an alcoholic. It's just because of the pressure he's under trying to finish the book. But you know Dan's never exactly been a health nut. He isn't gaining weight yet, though even that's just because alcohol kills his appetite. So he's hardly eating at night, which is another problem altogether. I don't think he sees what he's doing to himself, and I don't know how to break through to him about this. Sometimes I just want to say it's not like I have to get drunk to paint, but I know that's not the most mature way to handle it. Sorry for dumping all this on you. I just wanted to get it off my chest. Do you have any advice about how to talk to him? Yours, Linda. Yeah, it's going to be harsh. Whoa. It's coming along. I still think the bird ones are better, because it represents you as a bird in the cage. That's how I view it, at least. Art is very subjective. Hi. Oh, little dude. And he prop No, he didn't promise hey, anything. Hey, Mommy. He might have promised, but he didn't really promise, you know. Right drunk, edit sober. Apparently Hemingway said that. Or maybe someone else did. It doesn't matter, because it's true. To write, you have to be fearless. You have to make choices and plow forward. Surprise the reader, surprise yourself. Make something that matters, not something safe. What does drinking do? It suppresses inhibitions. Yeah. There are typos, but that's what copy editors are for, and it, it's not like I'm drinking all day. I'm fixing most of the stuff myself each morning. Or early afternoon, I guess. I'm not stumbling around drunk all day and pissing myself. 
I'm trying to create something they'll remember me by. No one can imagine how stressful it is unless they've tried it. The pressure's so bad I just want to give up sometimes. On those nights a drink is the only way to turn my mind off and get some sleep. When the book is done, I'll dial it back. Yeah, it's the voice there. If he uses that Hemingway quote one more time, pretty much every night he's either super focused on his novel or too drunk for us to spend a regular night together. That used to be our time. We would put Tommy down for the night, have a glass of wine, two at the most, and talk about our days or maybe listen to a record. Now I'm lucky to get one night a week where he's sober and not writing. Most nights he has a bourbon, no wait, make that four, and I read in bed until I fall asleep. He tries not to wake me up when he comes in, but you're never as quiet and graceful as you think you are when you're drunk and in a dark room, no less. Of course I want his book to be great, but I also want my husband back. Hmm. Interesting. Can I not flick that one? Get on that one? Oh, child, your drawings are so expressive, I must say. So what I'm going to do now, search the memories, and down into far more clues. Probably in your study, right? Oh, your light's off. That's not good. Just to sleep. Can you walk that way? I'm going to raid your room. Alan. Hey, man. This is going to sound odd, but... I could use some advice. I'm in hot water here because, well, I've been drinking more lately. Man, there's just no good way to write that. I mean, I used to drink and write all the time in school. You remember that, right? I guess I got away from it when we got married and definitely after Tommy came along. But he's in bed by 8.30 every night now. And let me be clear. I'm not blacking out or driving drunk. You know I'd never do something like that. I just have a few drinks while I'm working, safe and sound in the house. A writer who drinks isn't exactly unheard of. Well, could I sound more defensive? But here's the hell of it. It's working. It's brought back that college hunger, that energy, and in the last week or two, the book's just singing. I don't even know what I'm asking here. Maybe I just wanted to start the conversation. If you get a chance, give me a call. Dan. Hmm... This could be bad. I don't think I'm going to condone the drinking, so I'm going to find a way to have him not drink. <laughs> Even means help helping Tommy out. So I kind of feel bad for the kid for this one. Did it. Got it to Paul on Monday and just about dropped on the spot. Barely slept Sunday night, but damn it, I got it in. Abject terror is a pretty strong motivator. Linda understood, I guess. She had her own deadline, so at least she could identify, but in the end it was still a choice and she didn't let me off the hook. Can't blame her, really. Sometimes you just have to make tough calls. That's why they're called tough calls. So true. Oh, is that it? No, that's more. I can hear it. It's upstairs. It's over there. That light's still off. Huh. Light's off in the memory. Nice. Well done, sunshine. I think... Oh, that light's off. That's why I can't jump on it. Fair enough. i probably check what he wants. Put a bear in a whip. No. No, you're you're an alcoholic. Tickets are booked for the tower of September, just the two of us. Where are you going, Dan? I can see the threads. I think <laughs> the is the book. Where are you going, Dan? Dan? No. Okay, fine. I'll go for the child then. Hey, you. Child's not here. Must have been his room then. Child's in his room. 
Ch child. Damn. Where are you going, child? Oi. Figure out some works in my book. What? That's actually okay, you can go. Oh, gods. Just left the Dan alone. I can't. There you go. Actually, I already went into your memory. You're the last person I need to go to. That's so uh, off. Oh, bollocks. This can be very risky, but I think I can do it. Maybe. Why don't you stop it, too? I'm fine. I'm fine. We just got back from the show, and I still don't know how I feel about it. The turnout was okay, and I did sell a piece. I learned a long time ago to never complain about selling anything, no matter how small, so that's good, no matter what. But part of me also feels like the glass was half empty. The promo was okay, but I think the abstract layout was a little too weird for the paper. I really should have gone with more text. Then again, it was good of Dan to have helped with that part at all, so who knows how bad it would have been without that. I guess I was most excited to see what kind of feelings the show would bring back up, and it was just too half-hearted to know. Disappointment and excitement in equal parts. I still have some thinking to do. God, that sounds a bit ungrateful. <laughs> Shit, I'd be pretty ecstatic if I had my own art on display and it's freaking sold. I almost got just. Baby like. I almost got caught then. That was crazy. Possess him! Steal his memories! Where are you? You're this way, huh? You're upstairs, huh? Not in this room. Uh -oh. But he promised. If he doesn't do it, I'll help you, honey. What are you doing, son? Why can't I walk through you? Oh. Let me guess the picture. You still look pretty sad, huh? Hmm. That was not what I wanted. I read that, haven't I? Find out soon. Barb, I know I- Yeah, okay. Sure, sure, I gotta read your thoughts, son. Is Daddy too sad to put the other my car? Oh, yeah, we can. What that? Dad, you can help him with the car. Come here, child. His jogging shoes are right there. He just has to make an effort. Where to go jogging? Paul Bourbon? Nope. Jogging in car. Well, son. It's gonna be a lucky day. I'm gonna make a car. So the car will choose Tommy's resolution. Let's go. We're definitely not pouring bourbons. Although. No, no, no. Let's let's stick with it. And get some jogging shoes on. Diary of K. Williams, May 8th, 1952. Jay is gone, and I am alone. That is the sum of it. No other thoughts enters my mind. Wednesday... Wednesday? 38 years now? Alone? A senseless accident has taken Jay from me. What I should do with myself, I do not know. Money is no worry. Time? Time. That is the thing. There's so much of it still ahead of me. I have been blessed with health... But that blessing is now a curse. It is nothing more than a curse of time alone, without Jay. I attempt to look ahead, but cannot envision a path without Jay. For so long I have had to imagine one. The children do not understand why I have to come to this house alone, as they cannot understand my loss. Oh, man alive. Diary of Kay Williams. 
12th, 1952. Hang on, was that May 12th, 1952? And that's May 8th. Okay, so this one's ahead of time. Right. Cannot say if I feel better than I did upon arriving, for Jay is still gone. But I do feel a change. Some glimmer of a path is taking form in my mind. I cannot describe it other than a narrowing of thought. Perhaps time alone is to be thanked. Or perhaps it is something else. Something unknown. Today I drove to McLeodon's to buy coffee, wine and vegetables, although I was not due to run short of those for a few days more. I confess I went to hear human voices, to be around the living. I conversed with a pleasant couple and it did me no small pleasure or good. My first words came out as a croak and I realised I had not spoken in days. I shall rem A small reminder of my solitary days here, alone with my thoughts, thinking of Jay. Staring out at the sea just over the cliff, though I confess that my gaze always drifts from the sea to the edge of the cliff. Oh. Okay, Williams. I'm sorry to hear that. So they running shoes here? Nope. Do you have running? No, you wouldn't. Why does his head hurt? What? Why would he say these things to his kid? Oh my god, you're a terrible dad. Or what if he... Not even trying to. That's a sweater. Where is your sh... Oh, there they are. Select the running shoes. Go for it. So glad I've been able to compromise so far, but I do have a, a feeling I'm going to screw up and get spooked and spook someone. But then I can guess I can go compromise with the other person if I don't spook them. Why don't you spook the person you're going to help the most? Interesting. As your life came to an end, the Kaplan's lies had developed a pattern. Oh, this is the end of the chapter section. Cool. Dan finished his first draft and almost ran to the mailbox to send a copy to Paul. He knew it was good and he wanted to show his agent that he was close to something great. If he could just get it to keep together a little longer, he would have a book to be proud of. Actually, I'm not going to read this stuff. Nope. Epic. Okay, that's a bit foreboding. <laughs> 